which of these potential vaccines looks most promising to you at this stage? You know, it, it's really difficult to tell. Um, the, the issue here is that, you know, we have a lot of, of vaccines that advance very quickly. Uh, so, for instance, normally we would know uh, how the vaccine performs in animals uh, before it moves into humans. Um, often, you know, we will see human data from the first phase of, of testing, which is typically around safety and a little bit of immunogenicity. Um, and, and we've only seen uh, data from a single company, um, that's CanSino. Uh, and then we've heard reports from, uh, from Moderna, for instance, uh, that their vaccine actually creates uh, infection-fighting uh, antibody responses. Um, but they reported only eight of the 45 people who were in phase one. So, and it was done in, a, in a, an investor's meeting, investor's call, not necessarily in the scientific or medical literature. So it's a little difficult to interpret the data. We know that vaccines are moving forward, uh, but we really don't know uh, whether they'll protect humans. And, and in the end, that's what's going to matter, protection and safety. Uh, so based on that reading, you're talking about the challenges around data, and obviously we have a lot of different vaccines in the works at this stage, whether it's in China, the US or the UK or other countries. Do you think, what are the chances at this stage of having a vaccine that is widely available for the public by the end of this year? So you actually asked several very important questions um, all together. Um, so the first one is, is a vaccine possible? And, and I believe that um, based on the, the virus, um, you know, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, um, that a vaccine will be possible. Um, will it be possible in to show that a vaccine is safe and effective by the end of the year? Again, if everything goes according to plan and there are no, um, you know, there's no backward movement, there's no uh, need for retesting or redevelopment of the vaccine, possibly by uh, the end of the year, more likely by the beginning of next year. Um, but the most important question that you asked was the last one, which is widely available. And we have to remember that, you know, for a vaccine, there are three, there's actually three very important things. First, you have to prove that it works. Then you have to make it. And then you have to determine how to use it. And you have to use it. And, you know, we are, we are probably going to be able to show that a vaccine is safe and effective. The big question that follows is, can we make a lot of it at high quality? And normally these things, you know, you have a little bit of time. You have five to ten years. You can actually plan the manufacturing while you're doing the final stage of testing. And then, when, you know, when the vaccine is tested and shown to be effective, you can actually start um, uh, selling it because you've, you've made it and, and, and it's ready. What we have is 12 to 18 months not only to test it, but to begin to scale up production. And that's, that's actually a question yeah. that we don't really have the full answer to at this point. And then, you know, who's going to get it? Because it probably won't be available in huge quantities in the beginning. So who's going to have the priority to receive vaccine? And Drona, it's Ivana Hong Kong. In terms of who's winning the race so far, obviously it's, it's the likes of Asia, China specifically, as, has more of these vaccines uh, being tested on humans right now. Then you have the U.S. And, and the U.K. What are some potential obstacles that we could see when it comes to the final stages of testing? In particular in China, where we're not seeing a massive spread like we did back in Wuhan. Is that going to be a big obstacle for, for Beijing? So, yes. Um, in order to test a vaccine, you have to go into an area that actually has um, a, a sufficient, sufficient number of cases. And so it, it would be difficult to test a vaccine in South Korea, uh, where we are, or in China right now, because there aren't enough cases. Uh, or you'd have to do a study that is so large and complex. Uh, that it may be difficult to accomplish. So Chinese companies are going to need to find partners around the world who can help them to execute trials in, in parts of the world, particularly the final states, the phase three testing needs to be done in populations uh, with active uh, COVID outbreaks. And so, you know, you might look at Brazil or, you know, maybe somewhere in Africa um, or one or two of the countries in Europe where the outbreak uh, is still, uh, or in the United States where the outbreak is still um, substantial. And so, you know, there's going to need to be partnerships. And, and that may slow down um, the Chinese companies, although, you know, some of the companies are very aggressively pursuing strategies outside of China. For instance, CanSino is, is going to execute a phase one vaccine trial in Canada. 
Uh, other companies are, are exploring other options. So it will require special types of partnerships. Even the Jenner vaccine, which um, you know was initially touted as being ready in six months, is going to run into problems because the initial testing yeah. strategy had them moving forward in the UK, and the number of cases in the UK is dropping off. So there's some concern actually raised by uh, one of the uh, developers of the vaccine that maybe it, their initial projection of 80% chance of having a vaccine by the fall uh, might need to be revised. So a lot is changing very quickly, and, yeah. and it's really um, difficult to tell who's ahead right now. And Dr. Kim, do you believe that China is serious about being a responsible stakeholder in, in global health? To what extent, if they do develop a vaccine that can be widely used, that they could be holding this vaccine for geopolitical purposes, especially when it comes to the U.S.? Is that a concern for you? Yes. So, you know, I, I, the International Vaccine Institute um, is, is all for open access to vaccines because we consider them global public goods. So, you know, I, I would hope that no country um, uses vaccines as a weapon. Um, that when we have a safe and effective vaccine or safe and effective vaccines, that the technology to manufacture this vaccine, that the ability to manufacture hundreds of millions of doses, billions of doses, um, will become disseminated around the world so that we can rapidly produce the quantity and quality of vaccine that's necessary to vaccinate, you know, upwards of five to seven billion people with one, two, or three doses. So we're looking at a huge undertaking uh, to ensure vaccination of all populations. 